Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain and demonstrate what are mode shapes. So what is the goal of this video? So first I'm going to define and explain what is a mode shape. Then I'm going to perform the analytical derivation to derive the national frequency and mode shape for a single degree of freedom system. And finally, I'll perform a numerical computation to determine the natural frequencies and mode shapes for a simple square plate. So what is a mode shape? A mode shape is an instantaneous shape of a structure at a particular natural frequency. It is a deflection pattern related to a particular natural frequency. It represents the relative displacement of all parts of a structure for that particular mode. So simply put, you know, if an object is vibrating, the instantaneous shape of that object is the mode shape. So mode shape is also uh, can be thought of a stationary wave or a standing wave in two or three dimensions. So what is a stationary or standing wave? So if you consider a string, okay, fixed on both ends, it's fixed on both ends, so it can't move those, uh, those ends can't move. And if I pluck in the middle, okay, I'm giving an initial acceleration and leave it. So it's a free vibration condition. So the string is going to vibrate at its natural frequency. So what happens at this point? So when the string is, when the string is vibrating at its natural frequency, it's going to have set of natural frequencies and mode shapes. So there'll be points on the string where the displacement is zero. That is no vibration. So in this case, since the string is fixed at both ends, those ends are going to be the zero displacement points. So there's no vibration at those points. So those points are called nodes formed as a result of destructive interference. So the points at the end of the string are called nodes. In contrast, there are points of maximum displacement called antinodes, which are a result of constructive interference. So in this case, antinodes will be somewhere in between for the first fundamental frequency. So if you look here, uh, we have the nodes and antinodes. So in this case, uh, for a string, the yellow points represent the nodes or the regions of zero displacement, no vibration, because it's a consequence of destructive interference. And the green points are the consequence of constructive interference or called antinodes, which are vibrating with maximum amplitude. If you want to learn more about stationary standing waves, please check the link in the description below. So now we'll talk about nodal points, lines, and surfaces. So in our example before, when we considered a string, you know, a string can be thought of one dimensional structure. So the string has certain zero displacement regions. So in our case, the nodes where the displacement is zero. So nodes can be thought of as points and points are zero dimensional. So what I'm trying to draw here is that for every n dimensional structure, the zero displacement regions are always n minus one dimension. So in this case, we have a string which is 1D structure. The zero displacement regions, that is the nodes, are zero dimensional. So if we extrapolate this concept to 2D structures, you know, 2D structures also going to have zero displacement regions. But in this case, they will be one dimensional lesser, meaning there will be lines which are one dimension. And finally, if we extrapolate it to 3D structures, again, they're going to have zero displacement regions, which would be surfaces. These points will be more clear when you actually look at a mode shape. All right, also let's talk about natural frequency. So what is natural frequency? When I uh, give an initial acceleration to an object, the object is going to vibrate at a frequency, which is nothing but the natural frequency. So it is a frequency at which a structure would naturally tend to vibrate after it's given an initial acceleration. And initial acceleration is important because the object cannot start vibrating by itself. But once it's given and the initial acceleration is no longer applied, you know, the body is free to vibrate by itself. That's the natural frequency. So complex structures will have multiple degrees of freedom and hence it will have multiple natural frequencies. Now for every natural frequency, there is a mode shape. So a complex structure, since it has multiple natural frequencies, will also tend to have multiple mode shapes. If you want to learn more about natural frequency as well, please check the link in the description below. So what is a normal mode? The deformed shape of the structure at a specific natural frequency is termed its normal mode of vibration. Each mode is entirely independent of all the other modes. So for example, if a structure has 10 modes, then each of the mode is independent of the other mode. All modes have different frequencies and different mode shapes, but sometimes it can happen that two modes have same frequencies but still end up having different mode shapes. We'll look at this at the end of the video. 
A most important point here is when a linear elastic structure is vibrating in free or forced vibration condition, its deflected shape or a deformed shape at any given time instant is a linear combination of all its normal modes. So when a structure is vibrating, you know, that instantaneous shape of that structure is actually the combination of all the mode shapes. Okay, when we study, we study one mode shape at a time, but when it's vibrating, it's just a combination of all its normal modes. So what is the significance of natural frequency and mode shapes? So natural frequencies and mode shapes characterize the basic dynamic behavior of the structure. They're an indication of how the structure will respond to dynamic loading. Now, a structure can have infinite natural frequencies and infinite mode shapes, but only the first few are more prominent. We only want those that are making an impact. There are frequencies that don't even make an impact but still exist. We're not worried about that. Now, each eigenvalue and eigenvector define the free vibration mode of the structure. So, what are eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Let's look at those. So, the first step in performing a dynamic analysis is to determine the natural frequencies and mode shapes. But how are we going to determine the natural frequency and mode shape? That's where the eigenvalue and eigenvector come into play. Eigenvalues are used to determine the natural frequencies of the structure or the system, and eigenvectors determine the mode shapes of the structure. So let's consider a simple single degree of freedom system, and we'll determine the eigenvalue and eigenvector for this system, and you know, consequently we'll determine the natural frequency and the mode shapes. So in this system, I have a mass M and which is connected to a spring of stiffness K. These are the following exemptions. You know, the system would exhibit free vibration because I'll be giving an initial excitation and leave it to vibrate by itself. There is no external force and there is no damping present in the system. So if you draw the free body diagram and, you know, derive the equation of motion, it's going to look something like this. Mx double dot plus Kx equals zero. M is the mass, K is the stiffness of the spring, X is the displacement, and X double dot is the double differential of uh, X, which is nothing but the acceleration. So this equation, Mx double dot plus Kx equals zero, is, you know, an ordinary differential equation of the second order. So solution for such an equation is of the form X equals phi into exponent of minus I omega t. If you plug in that in this equation and try to solve, we'll start solving. We have to take, you know, the double differential of phi times e power minus i omega t. You know, we compute the, you perform the calculations and we end up a term called k phi equals m phi times omega squared. Now here we're going to call omega squared equals lambda. Plug that in. And, you know, we, we can see that k and m are matrices. k is the stiffness matrix, m is the mass matrix. Phi is the eigenvector and lambda is the eigenvalue. Now, lambda is a scalar. Now, we'll find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, in this equation, k phi equals lambda m phi. We try to rearrange. We'll get k minus lambda m times phi equals zero. And in this equation, you know, one of the term, either k minus lambda m or phi, has to be equal to zero so as to satisfy the above condition. Now, one possible outcome is phi can be equal to zero, and that's totally possible. You know, it satisfies the equation. But we're not interested in that because phi equals zero, it leads to a trivial solution. You know, what is phi? Phi is the eigenvector. If eigenvector is zero, what it means is there, you know, the particles are not vibrating at all. And that means, you know, the object or the structure is just stationary. We're not interested in that, right? So we want it to move, you know, dynamically so as to vibrate and that's what we're interested in. We want a mode shape and natural frequency. So we say we don't want phi equals zero. We don't want a trivial solution. We want a non-trivial solution. And the only option we have is, you know, equate the other term to zero. Take the determinant of k minus lambda m and equate it to zero. Now we know two terms here. We know the stiffness and mass. The only unknown is lambda which we can, you know, find it out. It'll lead to a simultaneous equation and we'll obtain the values of lambda. Now, lambda will always be positive and real because there is no damping present. And once we find the value of the eigenvalue that is lambda, we can compute the value of natural frequency because natural frequency is nothing but square root of the eigenvalue. Okay, now we have calculated the eigenvalue. Next is the eigenvector. Now, we go back to the equation k minus lambda m times phi equals zero. Now, of the four terms, we know three terms already. We know the stiffness, mass, and eigenvalue. Now, we only need to determine the fourth term, yeah, this is, which is the eigenvector. We plug it in and determine the eigenvector. Now, an important thing to note is an n by n matrix will have n eigenvalues and n eigenvectors.
natural frequencies and mode shapes are functions of the structural properties and boundary conditions. If structural properties change, natural frequencies change, but mode shapes may not necessarily change. If boundary conditions change, then both natural frequencies and mode shapes change. Boundary conditions are constraints applied to the structure in order to solve the problem. Now I'll be demonstrating this in future videos right here in this series. So where I'll be studying the consequence of altering the structural properties and boundary conditions. Let's do the numerical simulation. So we intend to find the natural frequencies and mode shapes for a square plate. And the square plate is 100 mm in length by 100 mm in width by 2 mm thickness. So I'm choosing steel as the material of the plate and these are the material properties that is Young's modulus, density and Poisson's ratio. The plate is not constrained at all, hence it's free to move in all six degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is nothing but the minimum number of independent variables required to define the position of a rigid body in space. So three translation meaning along x, y and z axis and three rotation is rotation around x, y and z axis. So here's a picture of a meshed plate, which is 100 by 100 by 2 mm thick. So these are the details. The plate has 121 nodes and 100 elements. Now we know each node has six degrees of freedom because it's not constrained at all. So the total degrees of freedom is going to be six multiplied by 121, which is 726. And this leads to a 726 by 726 matrix, which is best solved by a computer. And we're going to use the block Lanzos eigenvalue extraction method. So after performing the simulation, we get the results. So I've extracted 14 modes, in fact. But, you know, since it's a free vibration condition, we're in, you know, it's unconstrained. So the first six modes are rigid body modes, meaning the natural frequencies are close to zero. Uh, you know, it's just common for unconstrained systems, but we're in interested in you know, non-rigid body mode. So this the first mode is actually the seventh mode, but then, you know, it is the first non-rigid body mode, so we'll start from there. So these are the modes. I've extracted eight modes. Something interesting here, look at the mode number four and five. They, are, they have the same natural frequency. Similarly, mode number six and seven also have the same natural frequency. But it turns out they have different mode shapes. Now let's start looking at the mode shapes one by one. This is the first mode, 656 hertz. The second mode shape at 944 hertz. The third mode at 1179 hertz. The fourth one at 1656. And now the fifth one, which is also 1656, but what watch what happens. Okay, they have different mode shapes. Now the 612911 hertz. Remember I talked about nodal lines and nodal surfaces. So this is a case where, you know, it's a three-dimensional structure. So it's going to have regions of zero displacement. If you look carefully at the blue, dark blue regions, you know, those regions are not actually vibrating at all. So they are the zero displacement regions or the nodal surfaces or 2D regions. This is the seventh mode at 2911 hertz. Again, the same thing, 6th mode and 7th mode have the same natural frequency but still have different mode shapes. And the last mode, which is 2965 hertz. Alright, what's the conclusion? Well, natural frequencies and mode shapes characterize the basic dynamic behavior of the structure. Eigenvalues are used to determine the natural frequencies of the structure. Well, natural frequencies are nothing but square root of the eigenvalues. And eigenvector determine the mode shapes of the structure. All right. Thank you very much. I hope you understood and enjoyed it. There will be further videos in this series where we will be exploring mode shapes inside out. Stay tuned and have a great day.